There are certain moments in film almost too good to describe. Moments when all the elements of storytelling flow together so seamlessly that the line between fact and fiction begins to blur, allowing you to empathize with fictional characters in a fictional setting constructed solely for your immersion in entertainment. Moments of movie magic that leave an everlasting impression that are only possible through passionate dedication to the craft. Taking the time to have you fall in love with their characters, understand the rules of the world, get deeply invested in the plot, and interpret the themes that give the story a greater meaning to you. This is the power that is within your grasp as a writer with a desire for quality and a respect for the art form. And then, there's Disney, a company incapable of an original creative thought, lacking any kind of passion regarding storytelling, disgusted by the idea of respecting the lore, a company that doesn't even understand their own classic content and is all too eager to cannibalize some of their best work just in order to make a profit. Determined to accommodate every age, race, gender, and shoe size when it comes to pandering, but refuse to even acknowledge the most important faction. The fans. The ones who actually care about the content. The ones that make these projects viable investments. It's an issue that affects every franchise under its banner, but none more significantly than Star Wars. An IP with an unkillable fan base, virtually on board with anything that has the Star Wars label. The combination of sci-fi and fantasy, in addition to the massive world George Lucas created, means that you can tell whatever kind of story you want. Monsters, aliens, bounty hunters, droids, spaceships, and of course, the Jedi and the Sith. Endless potential. Yet the level of storytelling we've had so far has been absolutely horrendous on every level. Take the sequels for example. A trilogy of films that literally contradict each other and barely qualifies as a story. A trilogy that ignores the previous 30 years of history to reset the state of the world in order to tell their own story, rather than connect and continue the one that we came to see. Deconstructed and humiliated legacy characters while doing absolutely nothing to develop the new ones, or connect them in any meaningful way. A soulless sack of shit and a waste of character potential. From Carrie Poppins. Tell me a little bit about working with Ryan. He's an asshole. To old Solo. To Jake Skywalker. Give the people what they want. Kill Luke. To Kylo Ren, the most botched villain of all time. Can you tell us about your connection to the dark side? Can you tell us anything? No. Finn, the man who was raised to be a ruthless killer since childhood, yet proceeds to be a stumbling, bumbling fool, which not only contradicts his history, but makes it clear that this character is only here for comic relief, when he arguably had the most potential out of all of them. And of course, there's Ray. Wow. Classified, really? Yep. Me too. Big secret. There are filthy junk traders who sold you off for drinking money. You have no place in this story. You come from nothing. You're nothing. You're his granddaughter. You are a Palpatine. Ray Skywalker. What the hell is even that? Which leads us to The Mandalorian, and after the horrendous trauma of the sequel trilogy, something as basic as the show has now become worthy of praise. A drop of water in the desert. The last gasp of a dying franchise. The concept of a space bounty hunter is a great idea, and a refreshing take that I was totally on board with. But this is Disney, so instead of seeing the gritty, crime-ridden underworld of the Star Wars universe, we get Mando, one of the dumbest people in the galaxy. A man who accomplishes everything through blind luck and ridiculous plot armor. Almost never solving any problems with skill and intellect. An arsenal of weapons that he never uses intelligently. And virtually no character. All I know about this guy is that he hates droids and likes Baby Yoda. Just remember. Yeah. No droids. I heard ya. And by the end of the second season, both of those things are no longer a factor, as Grogu is shipped off with a plastic Luke, and he seemingly likes droids now. May as well let them have at it. The crest needs a good once over. So he likes droids now. And any investment I had in him after season one was washed away as he wanders through the plot aimlessly to set up spin-off after spin-off, and they do nothing to develop his character, culminating in the scene that finally broke me. Tell her to drop the gun after you put down the jetpack. What? <laughs> what? Jet what? Because I guess he can fly away. What? The weapons That's are the problem, not the fucking jetpack. Like the weapons are more important. Why is he taking? What? Why would any functioning human being ask for Mandel to remove his jetpack when obviously the gun is the problem? But I'll tell you why. The writers need Mando out of this scene, and they don't have the talent or the creativity to figure out how. So they just turn off his brain in order to get what they want. Oh my god, how inconvenient is all of this? Everyone's showing up at once. Get your... What? Did you do a jetpack? Did you just walk off without the jetpack? Why would... Why would... He was right next to you! 
I can't even understand the stupid language. Like, oh, 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 people coming back to life. With the stupid oh my jet goodness. Thing. Dennis, I <laughs> have been here. We've been here hours ago. What is the matter with you, you fucking moron? Mando was officially a lost cause after the level of stupidity displayed in this scene. And any hope I had for this show was now gone. What are you doing? A free kill. That's your cover. That's your cover! That's your cover! What? What? Oh my god. I did from the school of running away from things. Oh my god. He ran over him! He's an Indiana Jones! Answer, Boba Fett. The ruthless bounty hunter from the original trilogy. The man who outsmarted and captured Han Solo. The only one to question Vader's authority. The inspiration for the Mandalorian, one of the coolest characters in the original trilogy. Or at least he could have been, had he not lost his mind and forgot that a gun is a ranged weapon, and then got booped into a hole in one of the most random and embarrassing scenes. Sometimes there's an idea in our head of what a character could be, and all it takes is one scene to destroy it. But now, after decades, we may finally get some redemption for this character. Nope, never mind. We see him robbed and knocked out by those pesky Jawas. Only to wake up to getting kidnapped by the sand people and dragged across the desert. Not before squeezing some nasty shit in his mouth to wake him up. He beats up an alien dog and escapes capture, running blindly into the desert. What the hell is your plan, old man? The sand people track him down and beat him up, knocking him out for the third time in this episode. Welcome back, Boba. They drag him out to the desert to dig a hole, only to get attacked by a Pokemon. And he takes a clean straight right to the face from Machamp. And instead of dying instantly, he makes a comeback to choke him out with a chain. His iron chin and act of bravery gets him accepted by the sand people, and he finally gets a sip of water. We see him trained in the art of the sand stick. Why? I have no idea, but he seems to be having a great time. Until they get attacked by a random gun train and a bunch of them are mowed down. And even though they tortured him and denied him water, even though this man is supposed to be a ruthless bounty hunter, he decides to fight for their honor and get revenge. I will stop them. I will take rifle and stick. So he tracks them down and walks right into a group of them with no armor. An old man that probably hasn't had a good meal since Return of the Jedi. He should be dead, but he has plot armor and stick, so he's fine. He wrecks them all, then he takes another sip of water. He steals all their bikes, and then we get a montage of him teaching all the Tuscans how to ride. Like a bantha. Yes. Might I remind you that these bastards tortured and killed Anakin's mother and probably countless others. They would have done the same to him if it wasn't for his incredible chin. Yet suddenly they're all a happy family. They take down the gun train in another ridiculous display of plot armor. Then they shove a lizard up his nose and send him on a vision quest, wandering through the desert like a madman, until he stumbles back with the one true stick. They have an entire montage watching him upgrade this stupid stick and then they do the dance of the sand people. Why? Why was this your vision for Boba Fett? Why did you look at the bounty hunter from the original trilogy and think, you know what I think Boba needs? A dance scene. Thank you for your creative vision, it was gorgeous. Oh yeah, where was I? They all die. Yes! 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 <laughs> yes! And Boba is sad, and he pays tribute to his torturers, their watch has ended. And then he chills with a bantha for a little bit before running into Fennec. Remember her from season 1? Well somehow she's alive, even without a stomach. But not to worry, Mr. Fett takes her to the cyberpunk kids to get her a new one. Because I guess the writers saw Luke and Anakin get robot hands and they thought that applies to every part of the body. Fucking morons. They team up to get his ship back and then they head over to the Sarlacc pit. Why? To get his armor of course. Even though we clearly saw him climb out with it. Boba! Are you snorting lizards again? What the fuck are you doing? How could he possibly not remember that? He literally used it to escape. Also, remember how the tentacle wasn't strong enough to pull Lando's leg, but somehow Boba's ship is getting bodied? This is the shit I'm talking about when I say consistency is important. How is this possible? Yeah! Now, after those insufferable flashbacks, we're caught up to the events of Mando Season 2, where they take over Jabba's palace and cement his place as a crime lord. 
only to proceed to commit zero crimes and hire every criminal he sees, even though we don't even know what his business is yet. We get a few lines implying he's done with the bounty hunter life, but no explanation for what he's actually doing here or why. They do nothing to establish what his takeover means. No world building whatsoever. He just shoots Bit Fortuna and takes a seat, because that's all that's necessary to be a crime boss apparently. The only bit of info we get is one of the mayors wanting Boba to pay them tribute, which is too stupid to understand. But don't worry, Fennec is here to explain. I'm confused. He wants you to pay him. Yeah, thank you! <laughs> I'm the crime lord, he's supposed to pay me. Oh man. And even though he's done nothing to establish his claim, we still see him with Grimorian servants and getting paid tribute. And in this case, a helmet full of money. Why they didn't use a bag or a case, nobody knows, but I'm sure it's for a good reason. He introduces her as Master Assassin, Fennec Shan, like she's a fucking Yu-Gi-Oh card. Then she says his coins are shinier than hers, like she's five years old. Why is this dialogue so damning at every turn? Now go. Find other Bentha. Make baby Benthas. Rather than developing their relationship, or getting any backstory on them, or getting any character of any kind, we get nothing. R2 is a fucking trash can! Yet him and C-3PO's relationship is much more understandable. And they also make better choices, even though they're droids. Compare that to Boba and Fennec, as we see them walk out into the middle of the street, money in hand, only to be ambushed by a bunch of shield ninjas. Finally, we get to see Boba with his whole arsenal of weapons redeem himself and show us what he can do. <sighs> Never mind. He nearly kills them both, and instead of just grabbing Fennec and flying away like an intelligent person, they break out the Taijutsu. And after that fails, they're saved by the Grimorian guards in one of the most garbage fights of the season. It's, it's almost hard to believe that this is a part of the same franchise as the Darth Maul fight and the throne room duel. As not only is the choreography terrible, this fight has no meaning or stakes. Nobody's gonna make the two main characters die to a bunch of random ninjas. And any opportunity to show Boba's skill was lost the moment he fired that rocket. The old man throws out his hip and needs to take a soak in the tub. But thank god we have Fennec to run them down and smash their whole crew without taking a hit, and also bring back a hostage so the plot can continue. Boba asks him to talk, and he tells him to fuck off, and Boba's all out of ideas. No interrogation skills whatsoever. But don't worry, Fennec is here and she has a brilliant one. She drops the assassin into the floor to feed him to the Rancor, and he spills all the beans as they open the door, revealing that they were just bluffing. A brief moment of cleverness, but again, at the expense of making Boba look like a fool. A water merchant basically tells Boba Fett that he's crap, as his supplies are being stolen and this never happened under former rulers. No one respects you. And instead of even acknowledging the insult, we are reminded that he's a senile old man and just the mention of water is enough to distract him. I grew up surrounded by water. Ha! So he goes out looking for kids who seem overly hydrated. Where'd you get that water? They say they stole it because the merchant charges a month's wage for a week's water, and they can't find any work. Even though they are all dressed better than the merchant and can afford cyberpunk tech, none of this makes any sense. But the old man hires them for some reason, and then proceeds to tell the merchant to piss off, drop your prices, take half the money they owed you, and brush your teeth. Absolutely no discussion on the value of the water, or the context of the debt. They skip all possible logistics just to get him a cyberpunk crew. And good thing they did as he proceeds to get ripped out of his tank by a Wookiee and beaten in his underwear all over the room, until he's rescued by them and Fennec. Why? Why was this your vision for Boba? Why am I being forced to witness this legendary character be worthless at every turn? How did they even get into the room with them guarding him? Why didn't he just strangle him? Why the fuck didn't he bring a gun? Oh, it's a gun! No, it's a you <laughs> Now let me remind you that Darth Vader had to lay down an extra warning because he knew just how ruthless Boba was. But I want them alive. No disintegration. But this is Disney, so the huts that set him up apologize and give him a depressed rancor as a gift. And he frees the Wookiee because it was just business. And he even goes on to hire him in one of the worst exposition scenes ever filmed. And in order to drive home how incredibly lazy this show is, I want to give a few examples first. Mutation. 
It is the key to our evolution. It has enabled us to evolve from a single-celled organism into the dominant species on the planet. This process is slow, normally taking thousands and thousands of years. But every few hundred millennia, evolution leaps forward. Finding clever ways to explain the finer details of your story is one of the things I appreciate most in good writing. Whether it's explaining the plot or expanding the world building, there's many ways to relate information to your audience, but character exposition is often the most memorable. Constructing a scene where we can get information about a character, or even a backstory in a natural way rather than forcing it in. Take John Wick for example, where disguised as a warning to his son, we get the full backstory of our main character, in a scene that actually makes sense to take place after what his son did. John is a man of focus, commitment, sheer will, something you know very little about. I once saw him kill three men in a bar with a pencil. An effective way to flesh out a character that's essentially a blank slate at this point. But what about expanding on an already developed one? Take this scene from Rocky 2 where Apollo is asking his coach if he thinks he beat him. You think I beat him the last time? Do you? Hmm? You got the decision. Man, I won, but I didn't beat him! What are you afraid of, Tony? Honest? Yeah, honest. He's all wrong for us, baby. I saw you beat that man like I never saw no man get beat before. And the man kept coming after you. And we don't need that kind of man in our life. I know what you're feeling. A picture-perfect scene. Without even having him on screen, they create a monster strictly through smooth exposition. This is what it looks like when it's done with care. And then you have the Book of Boba Fett, where for no reason at all a drunk Wookiee asshole fucks up a bunch of geckos that were just chilling. Also we could have some lady come and vomit out his backstory. I remember your years in the pit. I've never seen a more impressive display of martial prowess. You were a legend. In the name, Chrysanthemum drew crowds by the thousands. Your knuckle dusters are more feared than blasters. You've met every challenge. You've won every trophy. Is it not beneath you to dismember this unfortunate Trandoshan? Complete garbage. Reminds me of Captain Marvel when her friend tells us that she's brave, strong, and funny, rather than taking the time to show any of these qualities. I don't even know who I am! So now Boba has his crew. And then he literally gets kicked out of his own show. In an episode that made it crystal clear that they had no plan for him other than disappointment. The entire season has looked like crap, and taken place only on Tatooine to save money. And out of nowhere we're on some gorgeous planet watching the best version of Mando I've ever seen. It's almost like they went out of their way to make Boba look like shit, just to set up Mando's return. I have given this man so much shit for being a moron, but for a few moments he was the character I thought he could be this whole time. Finally seeing him do some proper bounty hunting. A fight scene with some stakes, he actually got injured for a change instead of being immune to damage. He used his brain and negotiated out of a situation instead of fighting his way out. We got a chance to actually absorb his environment without constantly cutting away with the camera. Boba Fett is so worthless that I'm actually happy to see Mando. How is this even possible? I can bring you in warm, or I can bring you in cold. But of course it was short lived as he goes right back to being a dumbass, spending half the episode getting a ship that doesn't fit his needs just so we can see a pod racing scene, and forcing me to watch a plastic Luke shoot a baby. Get back up. Always get back up. And then the saddest, most pathetic tribute I've ever seen in my life. Please do not steal. Feel the force all around you. Oh, shut up! How the fuck is Grogu benefiting from Luke doing flips for him? He's more than likely just gonna fall off and break his neck. What is this stupid shit? Why is it every time you rip off a scene it makes no sense whatsoever? Another case of you copying the iconic moments without understanding what made them special in the first place. 
Not to mention this is Disney's second assassination of Luke Skywalker's character. As we watch him tell a baby to make a life altering decision, then hands him a lightsaber while encouraging him to give up all attachments because that's the Jedi way. Even though attachments is literally what his character is all about. It saved his father. It saved the galaxy. Did the writers even watch the fucking movies? Who do you think this guy is? Are you telling me that Moth Gideon is more responsible than Luke? You're not ready to play with such things. Libel put an eye out with one of these. Can you please just leave Luke alone? You already fucking ruined him. Go away! And after two episodes of the Star Wars variety show, we finally get back to the book of Boba Fett. And apparently, Mr. Fett still hasn't figured out that nobody fears him or respects him, and is completely shocked when the treaty that he made the day before was broken which leads to one of the worst finales of all time. You have so many opportunities as a writer when it comes to fight scenes, beyond the spectacle. The decisions characters make in the face of danger can say so much about them. An instant opportunity for you to show what they value most. And when it comes to choreography, the emphasis on realism and the respect for cause and effect is essential if you want to create an immersive experience for your audience. It takes time, talent, and effort, but if you do it, you allow them to watch a story unfold in a natural way. But when writers give up and abandon these rules, you get the final battle in the Book of Boba Fett. A scene that stretches the boundaries of plot armor and makes the Long Night look like a tactical masterpiece. Do you remember how they went out of their way to explain how much of a badass this Wookiee was after he smashed all those geckos? Well, they're back for revenge and they surround them with their Walmart masks and their shitty knives. But not to worry, he's got his legendary knuckle blasters. He's got a big ass gun. And most importantly, he's a fucking Wookiee. They don't stand a chip. Such a small scene, yet I have so many questions. What happened to all their knives? Why aren't they stabbing him? How does a Wookiee have the grip of a six-year-old girl? I thought you were a legendary fighter, man. Burst out of that shit like Neo. But instead, he gets dogpiled by a bunch of reptiles. You suck. Chewie would have murked all of them with his bare hands. The Gamorrean guards have had it rough. Getting choked the fuck out by Luke. Getting fed to the Rancor. Never really having their moment to shine. It was actually nice to see how down they were to scrap this entire season. I always knew they had it in them. Just to have them completely embarrassed and thrown off a cliff. Godspeed, little piggies. Oh yeah, there they go. <laughs> what? How did you lose so easily? <laughs> The cyberpunk kids with all their tech and after all that shit they talk get pinned down and surrounded. But it's fine, Master Assassin Fennec Shan just kills them all like it's nothing. Then Mrs. Woman walks right past the corpse of her friend to thank and admire Fennec Shan because she's so amazing. Look at this flip. Then we get to see the two dumbest men in the galaxy discussing battle tactics. And they make it clear that even with their combined years of experience and massive arsenal of weapons, and even with Slave One, a ship that Boba's been using since he was a child, even with the Naboo Starfighter as a perfectly good option, even though they're in a place with good cover and vision on the enemy, they decide to rush out right in the middle and shoot it out with everybody. Of all the things they could have chosen, they picked the stupidest thing imaginable because it was the easiest and fastest way to rip off Iron Man 2. As long as it looks cool, nothing else matters, even though Iron Man and War Machine are bulletproof and you two idiots are not. But the plot will not allow you to die, so fuck it. They tank shots from every angle until the backup arrives, and they do that stupid trope where as long as people are talking, they're immune to gunfire. And then we get some epic cyberpunk backup, in a scene that says so much about Disney's approach to equality, and falls right in line with all the other moments of disrespect as rather than having the skill and patience to write compelling and believable female characters, they constantly go out of their way to make fools out of the male ones in order to prop them up. It's as if they think the only way to make a strong female character is to lower the men, rather than having the talent to elevate and flesh out all of their characters. I hope you know you deserve to be alone and you always will be. This entire season, Fennec has done all the talking, all the strategizing, all the recruiting, the recon, assassinations. She's literally doing everything Boba should be doing while he's either soaking in the tub or embarrassing himself. Did he just lock the door? Y yes. Yeah. 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 Of course he <laughs> locked the idiot. fucking door, you, you idiot. Moron. God. God damn, you are a thick motherfucker. He's tapping the button like, come on, come on. 
<laughs> oh, fuck off, Penny. I want all that on the forefront of your mind when you watch this scene. That's basically a visual representation of that point. Buddy finally gets his moment to shine, only to get obliterated, just so Mrs. Woman can roll up with her bent ass arm and ugly bike to save the day. They cut to the worthless Wookiee, who should be dead already, just to have him limp his way back in the open, and somehow nobody lands a kill shot. How can anyone feel any type of threat when the enemies are this useless? Just how pathetic do they have to get before people wake up? The geckos show up with knives like a street gang, that randomly vanish. The fish people can't even aim their weapons, and stormtroopers may as well come pre-killed at this point. But they were forced. Oh, what? Well, how oh, did you what? get that? <laughs> All our hopes rest in the droids as two of them roll up to the battlefield, and after making a dramatic walk, they finally decide to start shooting and blow away their cover, forcing Mando and Boba to distract them. Now, there's a reason I mentioned just how capable Mando seemed in his return episode, because it makes me wish he was a well-written character, so we can actually see him handle situations in a dynamic and interesting way. But unfortunately, like I've been saying, he's a fucking moron. No shit. They run around panicking and refuse to take any cover. Then Boba tells him to protect the others and flies off. And Mando, once again, forgets he has a jetpack and runs for his life. I, I, I can't take this shit. What is wrong with this man? How can one be this stupid? For, for all the people who praise these shows and this character, please tell me, why the fuck isn't he using his jetpack? They remove his brain in order to have him on the ground so he can run into Big Mouth who decided to show up in the middle of a battlefield even though she was carrying a baby because Plastic Luke sent him with R2 rather than coming himself all to rush to the reunion of Grogu and Mando a relationship that is built on pocket lint yet people treat it like it's something as special as John Connor in the T-800 The level of quality interactions and growth those two had in one film is incredible where with Mando, after two and a half seasons, I still don't understand what either of them see in each other. Imagine if he was old enough to talk and have a back and forth with him, giving us the chance to explore Mando's character. Imagine the dynamic of having Grogu grow to love his loyal protector over seasons, yet never actually seeing his face. Imagine a conversation with Mando explaining to him why he can. not How meaningful these scenes could have been had they took their time with these two characters, as they genuinely have so much potential. But, they'd rather have a baby do cute shit and do fuck all with Mandel's character. What a shame. It cuts back to the Wookiee who gets front kicked into a wall. And then they decided they weren't done embarrassing this poor guy and more than likely ended his career with this move. Stop it. You stop that shit right now. How the fuck is he gonna make a living after this? Who's gonna hire him? Why are you so cruel? And after half an hour, someone finally suggests taking cover, while Mandel still hasn't figured out how shields work and shoots the droid in the open while holding a baby. Did I mention this man is stupid? Boba Fett finally comes back, and instead of getting his ship and ending the battle instantly, he shows up with a stupid rancor and the droid somehow can't hit this massive target and it manages to weaken the shield, allowing Mandel to damage it from behind, because that's how that works apparently. And then he falls off onto his ass because jetpacks aren't a thing. Now we all know the golden rule is you could only shoot Mandel in his armor, but apparently he can survive blunt force trauma too, as the droid literally steps on him. And before he can finish him off, Grogu billy struts his way in and rips off the droid's balls. Oh yeah, and Cat Bane was in this show, but he's dead now he got stabbed. Then they decide to rip off King Kong after pissing off the Rancor. Can someone please tell me why they're shooting at their boss's pet? Why would they even bother with something? So oh my god, Mandel's using his jetpack! But the Rancor grabs him and slams him into the ground, breaking every bone in his body, and then pounds him into the roof, killing him instantly. Then he picks up the corpse and tries to bite his head off, twice, 
while everyone else just watches and I don't even know where Boba Fett is. He flings Mando's broken corpse through a wall to the ground below. Tough way to go. But luckily, Grogu and his gangster lean rolls up and tells the Rancor to chill out. And then they both take a nap. And just so there's no loose ends, they show Master Assassin Fennec Shan annihilate the rest of their leadership. Sure, Fennec. Sure. So after an entire season of humiliation and wasted potential, not only did we get a final battle that was utterly pathetic, but it did nothing for Boba's character. There's no arc to conclude here, no message to deliver, no themes to interpret, there's, there's no story to watch unfold at all, it's purely spectacle. A combination of scenes and images to wall the audience. A perfect example of style over substance, without the style. Even his showdown with Cad Bane was completely hollow, as he literally showed up at the end of the last episode out of nowhere. No idea who he is or why he's here, as of course they do nothing to develop him as well. He's just some guy with a cool hat and no nose as far as I'm concerned. I think that is Con Bane! That's Con Bane! That's Con Bane! That's fucking Con Bane! Holy fucking shit! Holy shit! Holy shit! Shut the fuck up, please. It's people like you that are going to ensure that they never strive to improve their stories. Why should they when they can make a show this shit and you still lose your mind over it? Please have better standards and we'll never get good content. But I gotta say, I'm shocked they had the balls to kill Mando like that. I never saw that coming. Especially with- wait, what? Oh yeah, I forgot he's wearing Veskar armor. He's fine. No broken bones, no internal bleeding. He's fresh as a daisy, reunited with Grogu and ready for another big adventure on their new ship. No idea where he's gonna keep his bounties now on that tiny thing. No idea what they're gonna do if Grogu needs to take a shit. But who cares about any of that? It was so cute. This show is a quintessential example of the epidemic of bad writing. This was so hard to mess up, yet they somehow did it anyway. Another case of them taking an iconic character and turning them into a cardboard cutout of their former self. Thank you once again, Disney, for wasting another golden opportunity. Just put his ass back in the pit and let's pretend this never happened. 